Hi, this is David Abanakchula. Welcome to video 4E, which is the fifth and final video devoted to the part one topic of valuation and risk models. That also means it's the final video in the formal series associated with the 2012 FRM for the part one. And that means that we finish up with the following assignments in the valuation and risk models topic. Although I'll tell you that these first three readings are going to be more relevant than the last three. And these uh, first three are from Ong on loan portfolios. And so this refers to really credit risk and two metrics in particular, expected loss and unexpected loss. And then Kevin Dowd, measuring market risk, chapter two, measures of financial risk. This is uh, highly significant to us, highly testable. And we have, as usual, one learning spreadsheet associated, uh, 4E1, which is an example of the expected loss and unexpected loss calculations that we'll review shortly here in just a few slides. So chapter four is on loan portfolio and expected loss. And so the objective of measuring credit risk is that uh, banks must have a means of quantifying unanticipated change in the value of risk assets. So they're motivated by two main objectives, to quantify measures of credit risk and to devise risk-adjusted return measures. Now the expected loss here is going to be a function, a familiar function. If there's any one function that's important to us in the credit risk context, it's going to be this one, and it's going to be helpful to us because in Basel 2, or Basel 2, 2.5, and 3, in the uh, Part 2 topic of the FRM, in credit risk, the internal approaches, those would be the more sophisticated approaches used by banks, really depend on a variation of this fundamental formula for expected loss. So it's not as simple as this, but it is built on this. And that is that the expected loss is really a product of these three inputs, the exposure. And then we could drop this one out temporarily if we don't want to consider expected loss in dollar terms. But just in terms of percentages, we really just have a product of two variables here. The probability of default and the loss given default. And if they are independent, then we're just going to multiply them. And notice that we use, we tend to use interchangeably probability of default with expected default frequency. And then please try and take note of the fact that this is a Bernoulli variable. We either default or we do not. It's on or off. So in terms of random variables, it's analogous to a coin. And as you'll see, that means it's easy to calculate its variance. And so at, this is the simple variable. This one is not so simple. We will see that this was the one that is difficult to parameterize. And so what we'll, uh, what one of the things Ong says later is, well, you know, when we say something like, or I'm paraphrasing now, if we see a loss given default of 65%, we should know that that point estimate is very imprecise and it's probably more appropriate to give it a range or even best a flexible distribution so this loss given default is very uncertain difficult to parameterize and also unlike the probability of default we really don't have an easy access to its uh, variance for one thing the most common distribution in the beta here the variance of that is going to be non-trivial so you'll always be given that input and as usual also keep keep in mind loss given default is the same thing as one minus the recovery rate on a, on the exam this could really trip you up because you could be given either the recovery rate or the loss given default and you just want to make sure that you're using the right one if we want expected loss we want to multiply probability default times the loss conditional on the default. And so here's probably the, one of the more important concepts here, and that is the expected loss for an exposure. This pulls from that 4E1 that I just referenced, and the yellow are inputs. And I think this, I think this still mimics um, the example in Ong. 